Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very important topic, the Babinski sign. The Babinski sign. It is perhaps the most important sign in clinical neurology. So we are going to talk about Babinski sign, the most important sign of clinical neurology. So along with Babinski sign, we'll talk about the Brissard's reflex, which is very useful in testing the integrity of the corticospinal tract, especially in persons who do not have the big toe or the big toe is paralyzed. The Babinski sign, perhaps the most important sign in clinical neurology. Here we go. The Babinski sign was first described by the neurologist Joseph Babinski in the year 1899. So Babinski sign was first described by the neurologist Joseph Babinski in the year 1899. And we all now know that the Babinski sign is the most important sign in clinical neurology. In fact, if the, if the person is so sensitive that even just a breeze can cause the extension of the big toe, which is the Babinski sign, if the person is so very sensitive. The Babinski sign can be performed even in an uncooperative patient. So we do not require the cooperation of the patient. That's the big advantage of Babinski sign. It can be even performed in an uncooperative patient. Basically the Babinski sign, the Babinski reflex, tests the integrity of the corticospinal tract damage anywhere in the corticospinal tract above S1 can result in the presence of Babinski sign. Babinski sign generally the corticospinal tract has got an inhibitory influence on the anterior horn cells and lower motor neurons. And therefore, when there is an upper motor neuron lesion, when there is a lesion of the corticospinal tract, the inhibitory effect of the corticospinal tract on the lower motor neurons are lost. So the deep tendon reflexes which are inhibited by an intact corticospinal tract and when the corticospinal tract gets affected, they become exaggerated. So we have the deep tendon reflexes exaggerated in a corticospinal tract lesion akin to the inhibitory influence on the lower motor neurons, the corticospinal tract also inhibits the spread of the reflexogenic zone beyond S1. It inhibits the spread of reflexogenic, reflexogenic zone beyond S1. And therefore, as long as the corticospinal tract is intact, the manifestations are confined to S1 and its anterior horn cell. But the moment the corticospinal tract is affected, it can, no, it can no more inhibit the spread of the reflexogenic zone beyond S1. It goes even to L4 and L5, which results in the extension of the big toe. This is the wonderful concept. So how corticospinal tract lesion causes extension of the big toe? Because when there's a corticospinal tract lesion above S1, the reflexogenic zone spreads beyond S1 to L4, L5, causing extension of the big toe. Right. But how do we elicit the normal plantar reflex and what is extensor plantar reflex? Let's talk about the normal plantar reflex. The afferent. The stimulation is done. Imagine if this is the foot. The stimulation is done in the lateral aspect in the lateral plantar aspect of the foot. 
so when we do the when we stimulate the lateral plantar aspect of the foot we are stimulating the s1 dermatome the reflex center is in the s1 region of the spine the efferent is the s1 myotome which causes the plantar flexion of the foot so afferent is s1 efferent is also s1 afferent is stimulation of the plantar surface of the lateral aspect of the foot and efferent is also s1 through the tibial the myotome is which causes the plantar flexion of the foot of the toes right this is the normal plantar response so what is this abnormal plantar response over the babinski sign in the babinski sign there is an extensor plantar response there are two important components one is the dorsiflexion of the big toe and second is the fanning of the other toes so there is an extension or upward movement of the big toe and fanning of the other toes so babinski sign occurs when stimulation of the lateral plantar aspect of the foot is done when we stimulate the lateral aspect plantar aspect of the foot instead of the flexion of the toes which is normal there is extension of the big toe upward movement of the big toe and fanning of the other toes so this is the extensor plantar response or babinski sign perhaps the most important sign in clinical neurology what is the explanation what is the explanation why on the why in normal response the toes go the toes flex but why in the abnormal response there is fanning of the toes and extension of the big toe what is the explanation the corticospinal tract the intact corticospinal tract normally keeps the ascending sensory stimulation from spreading to the other nerve roots so the reflexogenic zone is confined only to s1 when the corticospinal tract is intact the descending corticospinal fibers as long as they are intact they limit the spread of the ascending sensory stimulation from going from s1 to the other nerve roots but but when there is a damage to the corticospinal tract when there is a damage to the corticospinal tract the nociceptive input spreads beyond the s1 anterior horn cell this leads to the l4 l5 anterior horn cell firing which results in the contraction of the extensors namely the extensor hallux is longus and extensor dictorum longus via the deep peroneal nerve so as long as the corticospinal tract is intact the spread is confined the reflexogenic zone is confined to s1 but when the corticospinal tract is diseased above s1 the reflexogenic zone spreads beyond s1 goes to l4 l5 so l4 l5 anterior horn cell starts firing there is extension of the big toe and the fanning of the other toes which occurs through the deep peroneal nerve so this is the explanation for the babinski sign so i told the most important and the most common way of eliciting the plantar response or the babinski sign but are there other methods to elicit the plantar reflex there are three other important techniques to elicit the plantar reflex but the most important of these is the chadock sign in fact the combination of the chadock sign and the normal way of eliciting the plantar response has been considered as the best combination techniques to elicit this babinski response chadock so instead of stimulating the lateral plantar surface of the foot of the sole instead of stimulating the lateral plantar surface of the sole now we stimulate the land, lateral aspect of the foot near the lateral malleolus beginning under the lateral malleolus drawing from the heel towards the small toe so instead of stimulating from the sole of the foot we stimulate near the lateral malleolus coming towards the small toe where we get the extensor plantar response over we have the open hand sign it is illustrated by illustrated by dragging the knuckles 
under the anterior lateral aspect of the tibia from the infrapetalar region to the ankle. This is open hand sign. Then we have the Gordon sign where we squeeze the cough muscle. So we have Chedok, open hand and Gordon sign. But of these three, the other important and common significant technique is the Chedok sign. Yes. Now let's see the pathophysiology of this plantar reflex. The Babinski sign is actually a part of the primitive flexion reflex. Part of the primitive flexion reflex. So whenever there is a threatening impulse, we tend to flex all our body components so that we prevent ourselves from the injury or threatening stimulus. So there is flexion of the foot, flexion of the knee and flexion of the leg which is known as the triple flexion reflex or response. So Babinski sign is part of the primitive flexion reflex. In fact the toe extension is in fact part of the flexion response. So it's a normal response normal primitive flexion response till the age of one year but once the infancy period one year is over myelination of the corticospinal tract occurs and there should be disappearance of this primitive flexion reflex it's like other primitive reflexes they're all present in infancy but the moment the frontal lobe is matured the primitive reflexes disappear and the re-emergence of the primitive reflexes indicates a damage to the frontal lobe or an immaturity of the frontal lobe. Likewise, the Babinski response or the extensor plantar response where the big toe goes upwards is a normal primitive flexion response till the age of one year. Its persistence beyond one year or the re-emergence of this reflex indicates damage to the corticospinal tract lesion corticospinal tract especially when the lesion is above s1 so in humans the infancy especially in infancy the primitive flexion reflex and the extensor plantar response is normal till up to the age of one year so they are normal only they present beyond one year they are abnormal or disappearance and then re-emergence of the reflex like a spinal cord lesion or a stroke indicates that there is a corticospinal tract dysfunction. Right. Another important question and a practical point is that we are insisting on the extension of the big toe, dorsiflexion of the big toe or upward movement of the big toe. But God forbid if there is a patient whose big toe is not present or the big toe is paralyzed, then how should we go about eliciting this extensor plantar response? The triple flexion response, as the name indicates, there are three components. Flexion of the foot, flexion of the foot, flexion of the knee, flexion of the leg. But the fourth component is the contraction of the tensor fascia lata. The tensor fascia lata is responsible for the internal rotation of the hip and the abduction of the hip and therefore and therefore when the big toe is either not present or paralyzed when we try to elicit the plantar reflex if there is a contraction of the tensor fascia lata which causes the internal rotation of the hip most of the time and abduction of the hips uh, sometimes we call that as Brizot's reflex and it indicates that is a sign of an extensor plantar response, the Babinski sign, that is the lesion of the corticospinal tract of S1. So this is the Brizard's reflex, very important. It is similar to Babinski sign and very useful in persons who do not have big toe or the big toe is paralyzed. One of the very important practical points is to elicit plantar response and and to know whether it is an extensor plantar response by looking at the tensor fascia later which is known as the Brizot's reflex. The most important component of the Babinski sign is the observation of the initial movement of the great toe. So 
So if the initial moment of the big toe is upward, then it is the most important component of the Babinski sign. It indicates the presence of Babinski sign. So the most important initial observation is the movement of the big toe. So the visible component is the dorsiflexion of the great toe and the palpable component is the contraction of the leg muscles and the thigh muscles. Not only a structural disruption of the corticospinal tract, but even a physiological disruption of the corticospinal tract can give rise to extensor plantar response. It is similar to the reticular activating system. The RA system is responsible for all of us to be in an awake state. So RA system can be damaged by both structural causes like pontine hemorrhage, tumor, but also by metabolic components like hypoglycemia, hyponatremia and hypoxemia which can give rise to a decreased in consciousness and coma. Akin to that, the corticospinal tract can get affected structurally giving rise to the Babinski sign but it can also get affected physiologically and can give rise to Babinski sign. So what are the physi physiological conditions which can give rise to Babinski sign? One, we all know that uh, non-maturation of myelination tract that is in infancy when the myelination is not fully completed we get the Babinski response that is a normal physiological response which we see in infancy but what are the other physiological conditions one metabolic coma as I said hypoglycemia can affect the corticospinal tract functionally and can cause an extensor plantar response deep sleep after seizures, a postictal state can give rise to extensor plantar response. Deep anesthesia and narcotics can give rise to extensor plantar response. Or alcohol and drug addiction can give rise to an extensor plantar response. And in chain strokes respiration, we have chain strokes respiration in persons who got the cortical environment wherein there is period of apnea followed by hypernia. So during the phase of apnea when there is hypoxemia and uh, functional impairment of the corticospinal tract an extensor plantar response can emerge. So during the apneic phase of chain strokes respiration also we can have extensor plantar response. So extensor plantar response is not only screen in structural causes of corticospinal tract dysfunction but also a functional impairment of the corticospinal tract dysfunction. So Babinski sign is the most important sign in clinical neurology it indicates it it tells about the integrity of the corticospinal tract and the Babinski sign is present it implies that the corticospinal tract is dysfunctional and when we try to elicit the plantar response by stroking the lateral aspect of the plantar surface of the foot we have the extension of the big toe which is L5 because when the corticospinal tract is affected it cannot limit the spread of the reflex and therefore the spread of the reflex occurs beyond S1 goes to L4, L5 and causes the anterior horncil of L5 to fire and there's an extension of the big toe. So presence of Babinski sign indicates that there's a corticospinal tract lesion or upper motor neuron lesion above S1. So very interesting, very important clinical sign and the best part of it is that we do not need the cooperation of the patient which we can elicit it even without the cooperation of the patient. So, I have just discussed the Babinski sign, the most important sign in clinical neurology. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.